Hello, it's Chris Badgett from Lifter LMS, and I've got Eric Davis from Upsell Plugin, and we're going to do a quick demo on how to uh, use the Upsell Plugin with Lifter LMS. If you're watching this on YouTube and you have questions, just drop below so that we can see them. Uh, drop a comment whenever you're watching this and uh, let us know what's on your mind and how we can help. But I'm going to hand it over to Eric. He's going to give us a demo of how to use upsell plugin with Lifter LMS. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. Um, excited to show the Lifter LMS community more about the upsell plugin and how it can help them. So I'm going to be sharing my screen here. Let's... And while he's doing that, I just want to mention we did just record a podcast episode where we talked in depth about uh, upselling and the upsell plugin and how it works as well. So if you're looking for more content, head on over to the LMS cast podcast, do a search for upsell plugin and Eric Davis, and you'll find that. Awesome. Thank you. So you can see my screen, Chris, correct? Yep. Okay, cool. So as everybody's already aware, we're inside of a WordPress uh, dashboard at the back end of the dashboard. And when it comes to the upsell plugin, um, here's the upsell plugin. And then, you know, for this demo, we have Lifter LMS installed. So when it comes to connecting upsell plugin and lifter LMS, there will also be a um, upsell plugin lifter LMS extension that we provide you to connect the dots. So, you know, I'll just kind of show a real simple overview. Um, and I'm going to show you what it will look like on the front end for a visitor because that's will kind of excite you. And then maybe Chris, you'll have some questions about the setup, but just real quick. So if you go to upsell and you go to settings, as we mentioned on our podcast, you don't need WooCommerce, you don't need any other tools for this. You just need either a Stripe or a PayPal account. So you would just come right into payment gateways and you would add your API keys and you're now connected to either Stripe and or PayPal. I always suggest that possible, have both Stripe and PayPal as an option on a checkout page because it's proven to see a higher conversion rate because the people that wanna just use a credit card right on your website have that ability. And the people that have wanna pay with PayPal have money inside of their uh, PayPal account. I like to call it sort of funny money because if people have money inside their PayPal account for whatever reason, they like to spend it quicker and easier and they feel like it's not real money for whatever reason. So I always suggest having both if possible. Um, and that's really all you got to do. So then you just go through the process of creating your products and I'll come back to the products in a second to show you all the options and the flexibility and the control that we have. But let me just show you what a visitor on your website would see and how, what the upsell plugin does because I think that will kind of excite you guys a little bit more than just walking through the technical side of things. So this website that I'm on right now is just a staging environment. Um, I'm sorry, it's just like a test website. So some stuff's, you know, gonna look a little funky, but here I am outside, inside of the website on the homepage. So I'm gonna scroll down. So let's say that your customer or your visitor wanted to purchase this product right here. I'm gonna click purchase now. And again, this is currently using the Divi page builder and everything you see here is designed with Divi. And we're just giving you, which will make more sense in a second, we're just giving you a links and short codes for the process to work. So I'm gonna click purchase now. It redirects me to a checkout page. Again, this checkout page is designed with Divi currently. The only thing that's being designed and controlled by the upsell plugin is this checkout form right here. Um, because we're connecting to a Lifter LMS uh, course, we have an account, username and password, so the customer can create their username and password that they need for your website so they can come back and uh, access the course later on. You know, a user can sign in if they already have an account. So let me just put in some fake information here right real quick. Put in the uh, W's out real quick. Let's do lifter LMS. Not to get too sidetracked, but um, a little trick I like to teach people. I don't know if you know about this, Chris, but if you use like Gmail or Google Workspace, do you know about the trick with the plus sign? I use it all the time because I'm constantly yeah. signing up and testing things. Exactly. So if, if somebody's out there that's watching uses Gmail or Google Workspace, I don't know if it works with like Outlook and things like that. I've never tried it. But um, you know, my main email address is Eric at jabbermarketing.com. But you can do Eric plus and anything after the plus sign, you can put in whatever you want and you will still get that email. So whenever I'm doing stuff like this, just like you, um, just a little little fun trick for anybody that cares. Let me just finish this form real quick. All right, so I, I put in all the information and I'll show you, you can hide any fields that you don't want. So like we're selling a course, maybe you don't want the person's address. You can easily hide that on a per product level. Um, you have the coupon code, stuff like that. So right now we're, we're purchasing a product for $49. I'm gonna put in the test stripe card. As you can see here, you can pay with PayPal if you want to. 
But one of the nice features that Upsell Plugin offers are order bumps. Again, in the podcast, I kind of mentioned how I like to think of order bumps as an impulse buy. So if you're going to the grocery store and um, you're at checkout, you're waiting to be checked out, even though most of the time nowadays it's the self-checkout stuff. <laughs> but um, let's say you wanted to grab, you know, a pack of gum or a pack of mints, kind of like an, an order bump. It's a little impulse buy um, that you want to have your customer add to their cart. Um, add to the checkout process to increase that order order value right there. So we, with the upsell plugin, you can offer as many order bumps as you want. So here we have two, for example. So I'm just going to check both of them up, both, both of them off. So as you can see now, instead of just buying something for $49, we added something for $7. We added something for $17. So instead of just the initial checkout for $9, we're now you know up to $73. Um, and just an example for an order bump for a course creator, maybe you do like a, an onboarding call that has like a additional costs, like, Hey, you're getting the course, but would you like a 15 minute laser coaching session with me or something like that? That'd be an yep, example. And it's, it's real simple. A lot of people sometimes say like, well, I don't know what to offer. I don't have an order bump and it can really be anything. Again, you want to sort of, you want to give value to the customer, but if you think about it and I can help people think about it as well. Um, I'm sure Chris, you can as well as you just did, but like, it's really as simple as you're offering a course and you have videos, let's say. Well, maybe people are on the, on the run a lot and they want MP3s. You know, they want something to be able to listen to on their phones. Just convert your courses, download, you know, convert your courses into MP3s and say, hey, would you like to purchase, you know, all the courses MP3s so you can listen to them at any time, you know, for an additional $7, additional $17. And when it comes to the price point, one of the strategic ways I like to look at it is when it start with, if you're, if you're running some sort of ads, let's say you're running Facebook ads. Figure out if you already know what your cost per conversion is, try to figure out an order bump that's equal to that cost, that conversion cost, because then it's almost like every time you convert somebody that orders that, that purchases that order bump as well, it's almost like a free sale from Facebook, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's what I like. Self-liquidating offer, I would call that. So you've yep, so made your ads no cost. Right. Exactly. And, and again, that's, that's where I would start. I, I'm always, you know, a big advocate on testing and trying things out. But if you just want like a starting point, that's what I sometimes suggest to people is like, Hey, if you're already running ads and you know, it costs you $12 to, you know, you know, for your conversion, try to figure out an order pop that you could offer for $12. And every single time somebody adds that to their order, you're essentially, it's a wash. So you're now just got that, uh, you know, conversion for free sort of. So hopefully that makes sense a little bit, but so I added both those order bumps. So I'm going to go ahead and submit payment. So it's processing and this will make more sense in a second, but you redirect your customer to whatever page you want based on what um, they just purchased. So as you can see here, we just enrolled into all these Lifter LMS courses. So again, I don't want to get like super technical. I wanted to show all this first, but when it comes to the order bumps, you can enroll them into a different course. So if they don't purchase any order bumps, they're not going to be enrolled into all three. They're just enrolled into the one. So you can, um, it's not like it's all, or, you know, all or nothing. Each, each product, each order bump is attached to a product, which is then attached to the Lifter LMS course. So if they don't purchase an order bump, they're not going to be enrolled into that Lifter LMS course. If you added that, um, if they didn't add that order bump. And then we also take it one step further where you can actually redirect people to different pages, depending on if they purchased an order bump or not, because maybe your upsell should be, Hey, you didn't purchase that order bump, but we really think it would be really valuable to you. Here's maybe a little bit of discount. We saw you didn't purchase it for $17, but I really, really think that it'd be beneficial to you. So here it is for $10. Um, and you can redirect people, you know, to different pages based on if they added that order bump to their order or if they didn't. But here we took them to an upsell page. So again, this is created with Divi and all we're doing is we provide you with links. So to this, yes, for two ninety seven is a link, which will make more sense in a second or no thanks. Of course, you have to give them the option not to, you know, purchase the upsell, but we redirect them to an upsell. Let's say they want to add this to their order. They're going to have click. Yes. It's a one-time, um, it's a one-time click with the Stripe integration. And there you go. So this ends our sales funnel, but you can go as long as you would like. Um, but this ends our sales funnel. And as you can see, you know, you can redirect them to anything you want to thank you page directly to the course page. You know, here we embedded the Lifter LMS short code so they can get started right on all the courses that they just signed up for. Here's a little receipt that the upsell plugin provides. But as you can see, what the upsell plugin allows you to do is it allows you to strategically take your customer through a sales funnel where instead of now just you sold them for $49, we now sold them on two ninety seven, seven seventeen. So instead of just a purchase for $49, we now have an order for $370.
So that's, you know, I just wanted to show you what the visitor sees and how, you know, how you go through that process, because it's a little bit more exciting to see this than just to see the technical setup in the back end. That's amazing. That is really cool. So, um, any questions for us that you have before I get into the kind of the, the technical back end or, um, what well, does it work with like, uh, well, let, let me just back up and say what Eric said about, you can have as many steps as you like. You could literally have like a flow of 10 offers, you know, based on where they were before or whatever. Um, and you don't want to like annoy your users or whatever, right. but like if you're just adding more value or like, oh, they, uh, decline the order bump, maybe you want to offer a discount or a cheaper thing. Like you can just keep going. You have many, try you have as many tries as you want to, to find a match, an offer match to what your customer wants, which is really cool. So yeah, just throwing that out there. And an another, cause you mentioned this earlier, I think in our podcast, but another pro tip, I like, you know, the pro tip verbiage that you use, um, you can put a link an upsell link on any page. So you can put an upsell link on this thank you page. And what a lot of people don't realize is the thank you page is a very, um, it's a page that people are looking at what to do next. So people are reading, people are very engaged in that page because, Hey, I just gave you money. What am I supposed to do next? You can even put an upsell on your thank you pages. You want to try to generate an additional sale, um, because people are looking at what to do next. So people are reading over, you know, your thank you page. Um, and again, you know, just to be, just to be honest, yes, it helps you generate more sales and make more money. But again, you want to be strategic and you want to offer them things. You want to offer your customers things that are going to ultimately help them achieve whatever they came to you for. So, you know, even though the upsell plugin gives you the ability to generate more sales and make more money, um, as I mentioned in the podcast, I do suggest you be strategic about it and only really offering them things that are going to benefit what they originally came to you for. They originally came to you for a specific product. Now, the things that you're offering them, let's be strategic and let's help them get to where they're trying to get. So. We don't want to just sell them on anything that maybe it's going to be a disservice and distract them from attaining those results. Let's offer them an upsell that's going to get them there maybe quicker or easier or faster. Um, because if you help them get there, you can then use the upsell plugin and lift their LMS to sell them on more products, more courses, more uh, memberships later on. And if you help them, you know, become successful with that original purchase, they're going to become a lifetime customer of yours. So you're going to make even more money off them in the long run. So I just always like to kind of put that out there because yes, the upsell plugin is about trying to generate more sales and make more money for you. But ultimately, if you're going to help your customer achieve whatever results they're trying to accomplish through you, you're going to make more money long-term than just if they, you take them through a sales funnel uh, path. Yeah, there's a, um, a concept in website building called UX or user experience designs. So you want to, we're focusing specifically on the checkout experience. So, right. but you should always be, like you said, be strategic and focus on what that user's intent and what they're interested in. And don't just throw a million things at them. Like yeah. what is their experience? A couple of quick questions. Um, what if you want to do something like a physical product, let's say they bought the membership, the high price membership, and you want to upsell like, uh, like a swag kit of physical like shirts and hats and sweatshirts that you made on a website like Printful or something like that. Yep. You'll just ship. Could you, can you do physical products in your upsells? You can. So the upsell plugin is definitely more digital product. You know, you know, it's more meant for digital products, but, um, you can, you can sell whatever you want. And as I mentioned on the podcast, we have a, Z a Zapier integration. So if you needed to connect a specific product to, um, Printful or another, you know, it, um, shipping service, like ship station or something like that, you can add, you can send that information over to them. Um, and again, I'm a, I'm a big advocate on trying to get as little information as possible upfront from the customer, because it's going to ultimately get you a better checkout, um, better conversions. So, you know, maybe if they're signing up for a course if, as the main product. So if we use your example, um, we probably aren't really going to need their address for the course. So let's not ask them for that. But if they purchase that swag and then they, we need their, info, their address to send out the swag, using the integrations that we have with your email marketing system, that's when we kind of say, hey, we saw you purchase the swag. Awesome. Can you send us, you know, your best shipping uh, information so we can ship out your, your swag? You know what I mean? So we don't always, I don't know if that makes sense, but I, 
me personally, I wouldn't, if you're selling them first, ultimately on the course, don't necessarily ask them for their address just because you have an upsell. That is the swag. We'll ask those people for their address after the fact. So, um, that's what I noticed up. about the upsell plugin is it's very much designed with conversion optimization in mind. And one of the concepts there is to ask for as little information as you need. So as to not create more decisions, more time exactly. and stuff like that. So so. If, you, if I, if I said, Chris, if, if we just hopped on our call, I said, Chris, what's your address? He'd be like, ah, you, I give this guy my address. But if right. you just, you know, if you just use your email, right. Right. Or if you just said, if you just bought something for 50 bucks and I said, Hey, Chris, you just bought something for 50 bucks. What's your address? I can send it to you. You're going to say, here's my address. Right. So it's the same kind of concept. It's like, why a person coming to your website that's signing up for a course and you're saying, what's your address? You're going to be skeptical. and like, well, why should I give this person my address? They don't really need it for anything. I'm signing up to take a course on their website. So it's, it, it's the same process when it comes to kind of conversions and things like that. If you just gave me money and now I'm saying, Hey, I need your address because I need to fulfill what you pay me for. You're going to say, absolutely. Here's my address. So it's kind of the same like logical, uh, tap. One more question for you. What about, um, if we have like free products, like let's say a free course and in our user experience design, we want to like encourage people to quote downsell into a free course in addition to the paid course they bought. Could we do yep. that? <laughs> Yep, you can easily create a free, um, a free product. So I guess in my test sites, so I'll give me one second. I want to show you something cool that we have with the upsell plugin. Um, wait one sec. Sorry, let me just find the right. Okay, so I think it was this one. So let's say we make this product. So it was originally forty nine dollars. Let's just say we quickly change it to zero dollars, so it's free. So let's now go into a private window again. Whoops. All right, so we just made that product from $49 to free. I think this is kind of what you're asking. So with the upsell plugin, you can have a free offer. So now it's free. Okay. And what we do, what a lot of people don't do is we're not asking you for a credit card now. Right. So because it's free, it's not like, well, you have to enter in your credit card or uh, PayPal. Which, which would well, scare people away, right? Exactly. But what's, what's, yeah. what we're, where we take it to the next level, which is really cool, you can still offer order bumps. So here's an order bump, but, but it's free. Chris, you're saying, but it's free. Like, why are you offering order bump? I don't get it. Only if they choose an order bump where now uh, they have to pay something, the credit card information will appear. Very good. And so they go with conversion optimized design again. <laughs> exactly. So if, if the person not paying you anything, we don't want to say what's your credit card or what's PayPal. People are going to be like, I'm not paying or anything. Why do you need my credit card information? Only, you know, then if they check off an order bump, and again, you don't have to present an order bump. You can use it just for like lead generation and just have them enrolled into a Lifter LMX free course. But, all, but I just want to show you that strategic. So, um, you know, again, we, we removed that. So that's hidden. As you can see, it changes to continue. So it can just continue. Um, you know, now $7 submit payment. We would have it where like if they choose PayPal, you change this to continue to PayPal. And all that information, again, we, we tried it. The upsell plugin is a little bit, you know, it's scary at first, a little bit of, of life. I didn't say that, um, but that's because we tried to make it where it's, you can, you can ultimately like accomplish whatever you want in a, in a simple way. So when you saw like the continue and the, um, submit payment and the pay with PayPal, everything in the back end is you can pretty much change without a lot of developer, you know, knowledge. So if you go to checkout settings, you'll see all that right here. So, um, you know, the free button would be continue. If you wanted to say like, you know, let me in for this product, it would, instead of continue, let me in and send it with submit payment. If it's just, you know, Hey, you know, you can change whatever you want and now I'll say it on the back end. So again, I just, you know, I know I'm kind of going all over the place right now, but, um, I just wanted to show that. So, you know, the way that we're developing the upsell plug and the way we're continuing to maintain it is, you know, it's, it's robust enough for the developers and the agencies that want to use it, but we also have, you know, the one, you know, man kind of guy who uses WordPress and doesn't have a lot of developer knowledge. We try to make it so it's super flexible where you can use all the other tools that you want and, you know, just type things in so it can, you know, appear the way that you're hoping that it appears as well. That's awesome. Can you show us any other just kind of key parts of the back end, like where to get yep, short, so, short codes absolutely. and key things? Yeah, absolutely. So the Lifter LMS integration is super simple. So if I go to Lifter, L Lifter LMS courses, and memberships. So again, all the, all the naming is funky right now, just cause it's a test site. You know, I just have main 47 with two bucks, but 
you know, whatever you call your courses, whatever you call your memberships, whatever you, you know, add to Lyft or LMS here and for the memberships, that will show here. So if you, when the person purchases this product, you just enable the Lyft or LMS course integration and whatever courses they're supposed to be enrolled in, when they purchase that product, they will automatically be enrolled inside that course. And then we do the same thing with the membership. If you want to enroll them into a membership when they purchase this product, that's how the, the Lyft or LMS integration works. So, you know, real straightforward, real simple. And then we let Lyft or LMS do its amazing job with the LMS, you know, functionality. So we're just focusing on that conversion. We're focusing on the checkout process, but we're letting you guys, you know, handle the rest when it comes to the amazing, you know, powerful uh, LMS functionality you've already built in. Um, so yeah, real quick. So you just set the price. You, uh, you know, a single, we have, subs we have subscriptions built into the product, um, upsell plugin. We have payment plans, um, multiple payments plans, I should say. So that's typically where it's like, you know, you can enroll for 90, you know, let's just say $10 a month or a hundred dollars per year. So they can choose, you know, which one they want to do. Um, so again, we have the subscriptions, we have trial periods. If you want to enable trial periods. So if you want to offer it for, you know, zero dollar uh, for seven days at zero dollars they can do so and then they would automatically be charged whatever you have so we have uh trials built we have pay what you want so it's kind of a cool little um feature where you know i don't think a lot of course providers do this but it, it would be something that i would test and try out where you know you can sell a course for you know pay what you want but you you can set minimum so maybe you want to sell your course for a minimum of five dollars but let people pay more if they can or you know, just let people choose randomly, but we have a pay what you want feature. Um, Actually, uh, um, uh, uh, somewhat common request. So, yeah, yeah, that's cool. cool. And we even have it, to, you can even do it with subscriptions with the upsell plugin. So if it's right. a subscription uh, course, let's say, you can even still do pay what you want. Um, so then uh, just the other big things are kind of like the URL options. So these are the URLs that were being plugged in to those pages. So you're simply just, so if I go to, um, so let's just go to our homepage real quick. Um, and we want to, again, this is using Divi. I know you guys do also have your own um, page builder. So it works with any page builder. I'm so, what's it called again? I'm sorry, I forget first. Uh, we have a theme called Skypilot and we have a page builder called Aircraft. Got it. So it works with, I've used it. We work, it works with Aircraft. Again, it, it work, when it comes to the upsell plugin, um, we're just giving you links and short codes and it plugs into whatever theme, whatever page builder. If you're using Gutenberg, you know, whatever you're using, it's going to, it's going to work with it. So simply, you know, if we come down here and we wanted that uh, button down here to link to um, the product we're looking at, that's all you got to do. You just come in here, you add the link, you know, inside of um, the button that you created with Divi, and that's really all you got to do. So then if we go to our checkout page, so I might have to find the right checkout page. I have a lot of stuff going on here, but, um, you know, all you have to do with the checkout page is you just add the short code that we provide. Um, so here's, you know, I'm using Gutenberg for this one. You just add the short code here. So the, there's a global checkout page. And again, I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's very robust. So I can get into like the nitty gritty if you have questions, but we give you the, the flexibility of having a global checkout page where it would just be the short code upsell checkout. And that renders the form that you saw. But then we also allow you to have a checkout form for specific products. So you can create different checkout pages for every single product because That's cool. that checkout page, you might want to have specific messaging for that specific product. So you're not just stuck to one checkout page. You can easily design and create any checkout page that you want. And then you just throw that short code into it and it will render that product for that short, for that checkout form. I like that. So for courses, you could have testimonials on the checkout page for only that course. And so it's exactly easy. there, yep. there you go with more conversion optimization. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Um, and then here's where you say like where they should be redirected to if they purchase this product. So we don't have anything for the skip right now because just this product was like the initial one. But as if you guys remember in that one, we were originally showing you the walkthrough. Here's where, where should they go when they purchase this product? Here's where they're sent to. Where should they go if they say, no, thank you. Here's where they should go. So it's real simple. You know, it's just, you plug in the URL, you can choose the page, you know, a page. It, it, we even take it as far as most people don't use it like this, but they, you can even send them to a page that's not on your website and it'll still process the payment and send them somewhere else. Uh, most people probably won't do that, but you, you have that control. You can just essentially say, you can just plug in, where should they go after they purchase this product? And you send them to whatever upsell page you want or the thank you page, because Again, the check, the upsell plugin isn't just necessarily a sales funnel solution. 
it's also a checkout solution. So you don't have to have an upsell or an order box or a downsell for a product. Um, you can just have that simple one product and it's going to give you a lot easier ways. Um, again, I'm not trying to like not move commerce, for example, but if you want to sell a subscription, all you have is one product for $9 a month. With WooCommerce, you know, you have to have all these integration, all these extensions, and you have to buy the subscription plugin um, extension to sell subscriptions. It's all built in the upsell plugin, so you don't need additional extensions. Um, here's all the order bumps where you can create order bumps. And as we said, you can redirect them to different pages based on if they purchase this order bump or not. And then you just simply, you know, add more order bumps as you go along. You can have as many as you'd like. Um, and again, it's all, you know, real easy, customizable, um, however you want to you know, add, edit the the content inside the order bumps. And then you just say which product this order bump is attached to. Um, the checkout settings, here's where you can change the colors, the text, all that kind of stuff. And here's where, you know, we're selling a course. So we actually don't want the um, address information. So we just say, you know, hide, hide, hide. So now this stuff won't appear on the form. Um, and you can easily change all the placeholders, the labels, that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, we can, we can look into you know, they can look into the checkout options more as well. Um, again, I can get into, you know, I can have a two hour conversation about you with all the different features, but just trying to quickly run through it. Here's the email marketing tab. Um, if you have like active campaign connected, um, you would be able to see the list and add tags. So when they purchase this product, here's where they would be sent to inside of active campaign. They'd be added to your active campaign list. They'd be tagged. And now they're inside of your active campaign list so you can follow up with them, um, you know, appropriately. We have a cancellation thing. So if you are selling a subscription, when they cancel it, you can tag them inside of your email marketing system as well. So you can then trigger, you know, the cancellation emails, the automations move them, you know, from an active customer to cancellation customer. So I can try to get them, you know, to become an active customer again, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of everything in a nutshell a little bit. There's, there's more to it, but uh, I guess any specific questions, Chris? Uh, either from the front end or the back end, I guess I'd love to just hear your thoughts on optimizing a checkout page, like any just best practices. Like we talked about collecting as little information as you need is a good idea. Yep. What else, what does a good checkout page look like? Yeah, absolutely. So it, um, this, the one that I was, was showing was, was sort of good, but you know, you want to add testimonials. You want to make it real simple. You don't want like the header. You, you essentially don't want people being able to click around. You know, you don't want too many distractions. So as we talked about in the podcast, like you have your menu and all that kind of stuff. When it comes to your checkout page, I would suggest hiding that information because you don't want people to start clicking around and getting lost and distracted. Um, you want to add, you know, testimonials and things like that. As you mentioned, have as little amount. You're only, you only want to capture the information that you actually need. A lot of times, for example, people ask for your phone number and they never do anything with it. So right. why even bother your customer with the phone number if you're not going to do anything? But if you need to send them a text message or you need to call them, then ask for it. But if you're not going to use it for anything, don't do it. If you're signing them up for a course and you're not going to be sending them something in the mail, don't ask them for their address. You don't need it. Unless you're going to use it, ask for it. If you're not going to use it and you need it later on, you can always ask them for it later on. But on their checkout page, just ask for as little as possible for the things that you actually need. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of it. You just want to kind of keep it really simple. You want, like, like I said, you want to add some uh, testimonials if possible. Um, and then usually you want to add kind of things like this, like secure payment. And if you have a money back guarantee and that kind of stuff. So this is really simple and basic, but you know, the, I, I, that's I, that's, you, also, you also want it to be simple. Exactly. I like that you have the uh, product shot at the top. Like, so like, it's just confirming sort of like when you check out on Amazon, like or I'm making sure like I'm buying what I intend to be buying. So that's cool too. Yep. And we do have, um, we recently added this, as you can see here, we added a short code where you can add a featured image. So it would dynamically, if you're using like the global page checkout page, for example, oh, nice. you, can use, you can use a short code that um, would dynamically pull in your featured image. So depending on what product's loading for that checkout form, if you wanted to show, you know, as you're saying, like a product image, it can dynamically pull that um, featured image. So it's always the relevant image. Wow. That's super cool. I'm excited, Eric. This is, uh, it's fun to go deep on this stuff. And I'm just excited for the power this gives course creators and education entrepreneurs to optimize the checkout user experience and add more value and also, uh, you know, potentially make more money while providing yep. better user experience. So it's good. Exactly. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's sort of it in a nutshell, like I said, it's, you know, 
it's things that you want to test out. But, but more importantly, it's, I want people to understand too. And, you know, I guess this is kind of like a sales pitch, but I don't really mean it to be a sales pitch. You can, you can really take the upsell plugin and just plug it into whatever you already have. We're not going to, once you do that, you, yes, you have to cre go in and create your products. You have to add your Stripe integration. But if you're already using Lifter LMS to capture payments with Stripe, you can have Lifter LMS still running with the Stripe integration and then add upsell plugin and build that stuff out over time and just plug it in. It's not like you have to restart or not switching. It. Right. Exactly. Everything, yeah. you know, we're, we're leading on Lifter LMS. We're leading on your page builder. Or we're leading on your theme. We're not saying, hey, you have to switch everything to use the upsell plugin. We essentially are adapting whatever you're using. You just have to create your, your products and kind of plug in some URLs and shortcodes. And then, you know, you're off and running. That's awesome. Well, that's Eric from Upsell Plugin. You can, you can get it at upsellplugin.com. We also have it listed on the Lifter LMS website and the third party, party add-ons that we recommend. So, uh, yeah, go check it out. Uh, highly recommend it. Uh, thinking in sales funnels, particularly if you're, you know, doing calls to action from paid ads or from social media or some specific traffic source, you can really tailor the user experience. Or let's say you're doing a launch, you might want to have a certain, you know, launch specific checkout flow and upsell, downsell, cross-sell, order bump while you do your launch. So there's, the options are literally infinite here. So yep. that's, that's super cool. Thanks for making it. And I really appreciate you doing the demo, Eric. My pleasure. And I'm here to help it. And I think you said this will be on YouTube. You're posting on YouTube. If people have questions, I'll, I'll be watching, you know, just comment in the, uh, in the comments below and I'll try to answer as many questions as possible. So I'm, I'm here to help. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Awesome.